Thank you guys for joining in with us here at Squatch in the Pit. I'm sitting here with Brent Deadly Smedley and Eric Barrios of Out of Darkness. What up? What up? So you guys are from Jacksonville, Florida. You guys are a newer metal app. Tell us what happened to cause Out of Darkness. Um, I had a pretty good break from uh, the other things I was doing. And I wanted to take that time and make a band of my own that I had, uh, you know, control over business-wise, uh, creative-wise, and whatnot. And I got together with an old buddy of mine, Rich Brown. He managed a band of mine back about 25 years ago. And I told him what I wanted to do. He found Eric online actually doing some videos, a uh, YouTube star that he is. And uh, he said, I, th I think this guy's really killer. You know, let me let me send you some stuff he did. And I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, right, whatever, you know. I'm sure the guy's good and whatever. But then I heard it, and I was like, yeah, this, this guy's killer. I think we can really do something with him. So uh, Rich reached out to Eric, and uh, we got together uh, shortly after that. We met at like a jam night in Orlando. <clears throat> Just got up and played some, you know, Maiden Priest and some stuff like that. We seemed to really hit it off and have a good chemistry, and uh, it was kind of born from that. Right yep. on. Now – what were these videos that Eric had put out that really caught your attention and Rich's? Uh, well, he did a, a cover of a Celine Dion song, which is actually on our uh, CD that we did. It's called I Surrender. And yep. he, sent me, he sent me the tracks to that. And I was like, man, the guy's got some pipes. You know, I, I think we could really do something with that. He showed me that. And he showed me a couple other off the wall, some, you know, some more uh, comedic stuff that he did. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like uh, there was a Justin Timberlake one. It was a little, it was pretty funny. I, I was making a lot of fun out of it, you know. And uh, <laughs> did some other metal stuff, you know, like typical, like Metallica, uh, Megadeth, you know, that type of stuff, you know, metal covers. Right on. And what was your inspiration for taking these? Because I myself, I always love these like clashing genre kind of songs where, you know, two things that you would never think could go together, but they blend so well. Like, what was the inspiration behind choosing those songs? Well, um, there was a, I suppose uh, at one moment I was kind of a little heartbroken, you know, <laughs> and I, I stumbled on this song, you know, and I was like, damn, this is a killer song. We're talking about that one song, right? I Surrender, is that what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I stumbled on this song and I said, oh my God, I love this. You know, it's a beautiful tune. The, the lyrics were really meaningful. They spoke to me and, uh, and as I was hearing that song, I just remember hearing, da, 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 you know, that pattern. And next thing I knew, boom, we had a, we had a whole heavy metal version of it. <laughs> right on. Now, I know when Brent had reached out to you, um, you know, it was kind of like a surreal moment for you. Uh, kind of go through that for us. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, basically, he, you know, since... Brent has a third arm called Rich, you know, <laughs> he reached out to Rich, you know, and uh, Rich just kind of told me, hey, you know, I'm putting together this group. It's got, you know, the, the drummer of Iced Earth. And I'm like, oh, come on, get real, man, get out of here. Scram, you know, but uh, he was persistent. And he told me, no, it's for real. This is no joke, you know, and he kind of he kind of told me, you know, some of the things he had done in the past and what was going to happen, what his plan was for this band. Some of the people he wanted to get involved in the project, and I said, "Well, I guess I've got to go do this." So I dropped everything. I left my whole life behind, <laughs> and I moved to Orlando to uh, to to start, you know, the process. And that's uh, that's, how, that's how I got in. Excellent. Now that was back in what 2019. Yeah, um, right end of 2019. Yep, December 2019. And then. I know you guys had just started to go into, you know, putting some music down. And then, of course, you know, COVID-19 happened. You know, kind of go through the steps of going into the studio and then all of a sudden just the impact that had on everything. Well, we, uh, we had just started doing the drum tracks. Um, we went to a studio live in uh, Oviedo, uh, right near Orlando. 
went in there and I think we had a couple of days we were doing the drum tracks. And uh, as soon as we got done with the tracks, that's when things shut down. So it put a bit of a hold on it for a while, but I think Avito kind of opened up after that. I'm, I'm a little foggy on exactly what happened. Like a few weeks that it was closed, and then we got back in there and finished it up. Or, or oh, we finished the drum tracks. I think it was, and then the studio shut down like right after the drum tracks. Yep. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I can't imagine just starting a project. You know, and hardly even getting, you know, we'll say the foot in the door and seeing things halt. It was a devastating moment, for sure. But uh, no, yeah, it happens. Happens. you just got to keep yeah. rolling. Yeah. Right. And you guys obviously have been. Uh, you guys just put out your EP through Curtain Fall Records. Uh, seven tracks total. Um, you know, which one... Which one of those tracks do you think really embodies Out of Darkness as a whole? Mm. They're all kind of diverse. Probably Control. Yeah. Yep. Control right. kind of all our different faces in one, more or less, you know. And why do you feel that Control has that, uh, or what message or feel does it have that speaks for Out of Darkness? It's got a little bit of everything, you know, it's got the heavy guitars, it's got obviously the thundering drums, you know, and it's got some uh, variety in the vocal side, you know, there's, there's singing, there's screaming or, or growling or whatever you want to call it. So I think it, it pulls a lot of our different uh, sounds together and, and wraps it all up into one, more or less. I mean, it's really hard to bottle up Out of Darkness into one song because we have so many different songs that all sound their own way. But uh, that song does a great job of uh, uh, kind of showing what we're about, more or less. Yeah, it's got a cool intro, um, and it's got some dynamics as well. You know, it's got some softer parts and, of course, some heavier stuff. It's got a killer guitar solo in it as well. Right, and, and then, you know, to kind of touch on that also, you know, with Eric being the vocalist and you being the drummer, you guys mm -hmm. also added in Bronzel... Cody and also Sean. Um, you know, how did these guys fit into the mold, and how did you guys find them? Um, they're they're not actually on the record, but they came in after the recording was done uh, or as it was being completed. Um, uh, Sean Johnson, I guess we'll start backwards. He was the last one to join. He's an old buddy of mine. This is actually our third band together. We were in a band back many years ago called Tempest Rain. We did, uh, uh, I don't know, 300 shows easy. We did an EP and a full length album. And then we we're in another band years after that called D5 Diminished Fifth. We did an EP as well. I've just, I've known Sean for, mm, I'd say about 20 years. He's uh, really talented. He's a great writer. He's uh, a great singer as well. So he was good to have for the backing vocals and to round out the guitar team that we have. Um, Eric, why don't you take it on Bronzel? Do you know a little bit more about that than me? <laughs> I, 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 Eric, a little froze there. Uh, yeah. Well, Bronzel was the first one to come in. Like, yeah, we, I can hear you now. <laughs> So he's a little muted right now. Um, okay, well, I'll take it till we get it straightened out. Um, they found Bronzel at a, a jam night, the same jam night that me and Eric had gone up and first met at. And he got up there and was jamming on some Iron Maiden, I think without really even knowing it. And uh, Bronzel, he's just uh, he's a great player. Uh, he's he's the young, young youngster in the band. Um, he's got a great energy. He's just a, a really killer guy. Uh, so he was instantly when they heard him, they're like, man, we need to grab this guy. And then Cody, we knew from his other band, he's in a progressive, <laughs> band, kind of like a gent band called Traversing Infinity. And I had seen them play before. And, uh, we knew that we needed somebody that could play some really ripping leads. 
So we had Bobby Coble uh, from Death Fame and Azriel. If anybody uh, heard of Azriel many years ago, speed metal band in Orlando. Bobby's an incredible player, and he laid down three guitar solos for us, and we knew we had to find somebody that could do that live. So Cody was the guy. He's a great asset. Right on, right on. Now, I know you guys have a lot of expectations and a lot of plans for 2021, you know, especially yes. with having everything kind of pushed back on the back burner there. Um, yep. What is the biggest thing that you want to see or the biggest thing to come out of 2021 for Out of Darkness? Well, uh, we're looking at the radio campaign right now um, that the record company is coordinating, uh, pushing that. We're making a video in a couple weeks for the single Think Again, which is the last track on the record. Um, so we're doing that. We already have a lyric video for Control. We've already played uh, about a half a dozen shows, um, only in Florida, though. We've played in Jacksonville, Orlando, and Tampa. Um, we're looking to spread things out. Uh, you know, we've got shows confirmed in like West Virginia, Texas, Georgia, I think maybe South Carolina. We're looking to play anywhere and everywhere that we can. Just build our following, uh, you know, get our numbers up, um, you know, sell some merch, sell some CDs, sell, uh, the, the uh, digital versions, I guess, you know, whatever we can do just to build a name up. We're looking to do that. And then we're looking to follow it with a full length, uh, you know, killer album to follow Seize the Day. So we're just looking to get our live stuff more together, uh, to gel more as a band, um, you know, get our chemistry going live and whatnot, just to, you know, spread, spread the word, basically. Excellent. Now, Seize the Day was just released here at the beginning of the month. Um, and I know you guys have physical copies, of course. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with today's world, there's streaming available uh, everywhere. Uh, where can everybody find, I know you also talked about merch, where can everybody find the merch, the CDs? Uh, out of Darkness, <clears throat> out of darkness .live. Uh You can find us on Bandcamp. I think the streaming stuff is on Spotify. I believe it's on Apple Music. Eric knows a little bit more about that than me. Maybe when we get him back on here, we can, if he gets back on, <laughs> we can have him answer that as well. Yeah, he should be getting back in here shortly. But uh, the main site is outofdarkness.live. That that should take you to everything. Awesome. I know I, I myself, I've looked at that more than a, a handful of times. Looking forward. Uh, yeah, listening to the album a few different times there. Awesome. Um, now, I know you guys have a show upcoming in May um, at the 1904 Music Hall, which you guys played there the very end of February. Yep. You know, what was it like getting back on, you know, stage performing in front of, you know, the live crowd after, you know, being on that little bit of a break due to, you know, that, that forced break, we'll say. Right on. I mean, it was killer. I mean, <clears throat> that's what it's all about. I mean, I love recording. You know, the recording is what's forever. That's something tangible that people can hold in their hand, you know, get familiar with the music. So when they come to the show, but the live show is really where it's at. Um, the way that the, uh, <clears throat> the way that the industry has turned because of all the downloading and everything, that's where the money's really at. You know, that's the, uh, you know, the steadfast part of the industry is playing live. I mean, that's always been my favorite part anyway, you know, going out on tour and just playing night after night, you know, giving it your all and getting the immediate reaction back from the crowd. I mean, it's killer to get back on stage. I mean, that's what you do it all for. The recording is a rather quick process compared to, you know, doing the deal is what I call it, you know, doing a, you know, the, the tour to really promote the record and play as much as you can, <clears throat> as many places as you can. So, I mean, that's killer. But the 1904 show, that was actually our sixth show. We had played in uh, Tampa a couple times, Orlando a couple times. We've done a couple uh, of live streams as well. But no, it's awesome. That was probably our best show to date. You know, it's my first hometown show with a band. But we're not actually all from Jacksonville. Only me and Sean are from Jacksonville. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Ronzel lives around Daytona, uh, Deltona, I think. Um, and Cody and Eric live more like in Orlando, <clears throat> more like in Orlando. I gotcha. We're relatively close, but. Yeah, I would, that's all within what, a, a few hour drive from each other? Yeah. Yeah, two, three hours. We're pretty yeah. close. So that's definitely reasonable to allow you guys to all get together and, um, you know, do things together and do the like the upcoming video, practice, everything. Just I know speaking with some of these um, fans of the quarantine, you know, where some of them were, you know, in the U.S. and Canada where they could not, even if they wanted to, they couldn't get together because of, you know, the border being closed. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's tricky. I can imagine enough. being... Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, I, I can imagine, you know, just how awesome it was to just be able to be together, um, you know, almost whenever you wanted to today. Yeah, we get together on the weekends, you know, uh, every other weekend, every couple weekends. The guys all come to my place. <clears throat> I've got a pretty neat headquarters here. I've got a nice band room, and, you know, we get together, get together and practice, and they stare. <laughs> the mask wonder. Am I back? Yeah, you're back, man. Oh, man, that was so crazy. What a rush. (laughs) Well, we're happy to have you back. All right. But, yeah, we, uh, you know, we get together and do that. We'll just jam like, uh, you know, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, and and then everybody goes their separate ways. We just do some marathon practicing. Now, is there anything when you guys get together that – you know, it's just not music based that you guys love to do together. Um, you know, or even music based that you guys just really enjoy. Uh, I mean, we would jam around sometimes after practice. We might catch a little buzz and just jam on some tunes, some cover tunes and whatnot. Uh, I mean, that's about it. I mean, I've got a ping pong table here. We haven't really broken that in too much. And there's a lake here as well. Sometimes the guys go on the canoe. And- I've got 50 years here. Sometimes we'll go around on the trails and whatnot. That's about it. Now, you know, with with the two of you, you know, there's definitely a, you know, we'll say a generation gap. You know, a good 10 years um, between you. (laughs) Yeah, 10 years or so. (laughs) <laughs> now, what do you, what do you feel, you know, works so well um, that you're able to bring and that Eric is able to bring that, you know, it makes it to where there is no gap, you know, you know how they always say age is a number, um, you know, what's able to allow you to, to mesh so well? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Music is kind of timeless, you know. There's basically, you know, there's all different kind of genres. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I'm more old school. I come from, like, Maiden and Sabbath and Priest and, you know. And after that, like, you know, Queensryche, Pantera, King Bay Malmsteen, stuff like that. Eric comes from a little bit of a newer feel. You know, he's a good bit younger than me. So uh, I'm more old school, and I guess you say he's more new school. Now, what do you think, Eric? Yeah, I mean, well, I, obviously the power of connecting, right? It's a project all together. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the old stuff, and I think a lot of the new stuff, too, you know. Hey, what's up, Bronze? Yo! Uh, yo, yo. Big big yo <laughs> so, <laughs> I think a lot of these There we go. I mean, it's a lot of treasure actors old stuff right now. The power of music is what binds us all. Absolutely, right on. Now, for anybody just joining in, um, you know, we, we're also welcome here with Brown Zell, also a member of Out of Darkness. Now, Brown Zell. Uh, just gonna go right to you. Um, you know what was the whole experience of you know being approached to 
join out of darkness and what the pen uh, ever since. Um, first, I want to uh, test this mic. Is it? Can everybody hear me? Everybody oh yeah, you're good, me? man. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um. Awesome. The experience, man. It was. It was something. Uh, I feel special, man, because uh, you know, uh, even going to the bar that night, the open mic that we met, you know, that decision was uh, last minute. You know, so uh, you know, the fact that I was there, you know, I feel it was like, you know, a special type of timing. You know, so um. Meeting those guys was really special. You know, um, Eric and um, Rich for sure. Uh, I was kind of nervous. I will say that. But, you know, those guys started really letting everything um, on me, like, you know, all of our plans and stuff like that. And I was just a dope So. Now, what was but what was the biggest thing that got you into metal uh, at a young age, or whenever you know metal took over your life? Um, my father's always been uh, a lot of music, so my house was always. You know, kind of just open to all types. Um, I came to heavy metal fully, like I say, maybe like uh, not like two years, a year and a half. Um, I had always been, you know, on my bass playing music and you know, studying you know, thing on it, but um, as far as diving into, you know, just, you know, just what makes heavy metal heavy metal. You know, it's been like two years, um, and I can honestly say it was just the the bar. And, um, obviously, there are some amazing, you know, musicians in metal. Just the energy, you know, that has a lot to do with it. you know being able to play at such an elite level and still be able to physically be out there, you know, projecting. I feel, you know, that's special. You know, I feel that that's unique. Right on. Now, I know, Brent, you had kind of touched on, you know, some of the the earlier, uh, you know, Godfather of metal. You know, what, what had gotten you into metal um, when you were younger? Um... Uh, probably the first first band would be Black Sabbath. You know, they're, they're the first one I heard. Do you hear Do you hear all that noise, or is it just me? I'm so sorry. There's this huge boat over there just making a bunch of noise. And turn turn your mic down or something, maybe. Yeah, let me. I'll mute my mic until it's time to talk. My my bad. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, Black Sabbath was the first. Was the first uh, stuff I really heard. Uh, it, was, it was heavy metal. Jeez, um, man. Hey, Aaron, did you did you mute your mic? Hey, what's up? Okay. Is that, is that still hearing, hearing some noise, man. But anyway, it was sound was the first. What's that? I was gonna say, Brando, do you have uh, sound coming through your speakers too? Um, no, I think it's coming through my uh, headphones right now. Okay. But uh, other than that, you know, the band that really got me going was uh, Iron Maiden. I saw Maiden on the Peace of Mind tour, and I saw the subsequent two tours after that. Um, there we go. Uh, Power Slave and uh, Somewhere in Time. <clears throat> and I mean, when I saw the Peace of Mind tour, that was pretty much it. It's like I want to do my version of, of that kind of thing. So Maiden was definitely a big, big influence. Now, what age were you uh, when you had that experience? Uh, I guess Maiden, I would have been about 13. About 13. And then, yeah. and then when did you pick up your first drumsticks? I actually started playing when I was about seven. Uh, I played for a couple years from about seven to nine. 
And then I kind of lost interest, you know, being a kid. <clears throat> and I got pretty serious back into it. When I was about 13, um, I started taking drum lessons from a real drum teacher. And uh, I started playing in school band and stuff like that. And started jamming and, you know, pick up bands and whatnot. And uh, that's when I started getting serious about it after seeing Iron Maiden. Right on. Now, Eric, how about you? What was that first that first case of metal that made you think, you know, this is it for me? Megadeth. Uh, I was uh, I was sitting, you know, you know what? It was earlier than Megadeth, but Megadeth was a turning point for me. Uh, in middle school, I remember hearing rock radio, you know, and uh, I got into some really simple stuff, you know, that was on there, you know, I guess System of a Down or whatever. That was a big one on me. But then after a while, <clears throat> I remember in high school, I was sitting with a buddy of mine, Kao Sean. He's, uh, he's really big on Megadeth. And he, he sat me down and he said, you have got to hear this. And uh, I sat down and I heard uh, Hangry Teen and, uh, and Holy War. And I said, man, they shred. I want to shred like that. So that was kind of the start of it for me in terms of, you know, stepping up my game and getting into metal deeply. That, that really sparked something for me. I, I just flipped out and, and obsessed over it, you know. Absolutely. Now, with we had touched on you guys performing at the 1904 Music Hall back in, Feb in February. You guys will be back there in May. Um, what other shows do you guys have uh, planned for this year? I know, Brent, you had spoken about them a few. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there is Metal in the Mountains. Um, yeah, as well, I know it. you guys. Go ahead. Yeah, I know that one's in, in the at the very end of August. Um, right on. You know, are there really any other uh, festivals that you guys have planned for this year at all? Um, we're doing Haltom Festival over in Texas, uh, the the metal festival at the uh, Haltom Theater in Texas, in Allen, in Haltom, Texas. Sorry, that's the name of the place, Haltom, Texas. And uh, we're in North Carolina, Metal in the Mountains, right. of course. And then we're doing some extra dates that our manager is streaming together right now. Yeah, I, know I know we're playing May 7th in Orlando. We're opening up for a Killer's Confession. I think it's their tour kickoff party. Um, and then, do you know what the other dates are? Yeah, we're doing May 7th in Tampa, then I believe May 8th in Jacksonville, and I believe the 24th in Orlando, all in May. I think there's a Tallahassee date in there somewhere, too. Yeah, there is a Tallahassee date. That's right. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is. I think he's still confirming that one. But it definitely sounds like... Florida is going to be getting you guys a lot here, and then you guys will be heading out and hitting up the southeast some more. Uh, you know, I myself, I'm going to be at Metal in the Mountains, so definitely looking forward to seeing you guys there. Awesome. Um, nice. Yeah. Now, are there any bands that have really stuck out to you guys over the last you know, year, year and a half that you haven't toured with that you want to tour with? Uh, Ginger. That's a good one. Uh, I can't really think of anybody offhand. Yeah, same here. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head right now. I mean, of course, there's bands we'd love to tour with. For sure. What's that? I'd say Ginger and Tesseract would be great ones. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I would love to tour with quite a list of bands, to be honest. You know, if I could <laughs> write them all down, pass it over, get it done. I, you know, <laughs> we're, we're metal well, musicians. Put them down, hand them to too, right? That's right. Just make sure you get them all over to Rich. He'll make sure it happens. <laughs> I mean, of course, we'd love to tour with, you know, Maiden, Priest. Yeah. You know, Metallica, Megadeth, all those bands would be great, you know, Disturbed. Now, with some of these metal bands, that, that'd be great. 
<laughs> hey, you, you never know what's going to happen. It could happen. Right on. You never know. Um, you know, but with but with these, you know, these metal acts that have been doing it for 30, 40 years plus, um, you know, what do you get from them that, you know, gives you that energy, gives you that that push to know that, you know, it, it might not happen right away, but that hard work and perseverance, you know, can lead to a long career of doing what you love. Um, I think it's just sticking with it, you know, and if, if you look at the bands, uh, like to, to me, the three biggest metal bands are, you know, Sabbath, Priest, and Maiden. Um, if you look at them, I don't think any of them really exploded in the beginning. It took a few records, you know. Uh, Maiden uh, is the one I'm most familiar with. You know, they created a pretty good buzz on the first record. It became even bigger on the second record. And then by the time Number of the Beast came out, you know, I think uh, Run to the Hills, I think, was a top 40 hit. You know, they were starting to get a lot of play on MTV and whatnot. Uh, you know, and due to their, their relentless touring, you know, they began to break. Judas Priest, I think it took quite a few more records for them. You know, I first got into Priest really uh, screaming for vengeance record, but I know British Steel was kind of their breakthrough, you know, with the radio hits, Breaking the Law and uh, Living After Midnight, that kind of stuff. But, you know, I think there was a good amount. I'm not sure how many, but I know there was a good many records before that. Um, as far as Sabbath, you know, their most popular stuff like, uh, you know, Iron Man and War Pigs and, you know, Fairies Wear Boots and Paranoid and all that. That was off the uh, Paranoid record. I think that might have been their third record, maybe. I'm not sure. I should know that better, but um, so you know, you, you look at those bands. It took them a few records before they really got, you know, really started uh, amassing their following and you know, creating their their place in the uh, in the metal world, so to speak. So you know, you look at that. Like uh, we're very proud of our EP. You know, I think it's uh, it's pretty diverse for, you know, seven tracks. It's, uh, you know, it's got a lot of different dynamics in it and whatnot. It showcases us as much as seven tracks can, but we're looking to follow it up with a, you know, full length killer record and uh, just kind of build upon that. So, I mean, I know that's kind of a long answer, but I think part of it is just sticking with it. You know, you can't expect, uh, you know, I mean, occasionally there's going to be a band like, uh, you know, I was pretty big into Quiet Riot when they first came out. They were the first band to debut at number one, first metal band to debut at number one. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for them, they never repeated that same success. I think they sold about five million of the first record, about a million of the second record. 500,000 of the third record, you know, it steadily kind of went down from there. But most bands build to that kind of success instead of start off like that. So, I mean, that's what I look at. And you just look at the, uh, you know, the work that they put in. Like uh, Maiden, they've done mammoth tours, you know, 13-month tours, yeah. you know, a year and a half long tours. I mean, they're they're broken up into legs. It's not like they're out on the road the whole time, but they're out on the road most of the time. They go home long enough to do their laundry and, you know, see their family and then they're back out at it. I think it's the mm -hmm. relentless touring. You know, metal bands are built on touring. So Absolutely. I would say those are, those are uh, the things that we look at as far as any other kind of thing that you can do to, uh, you know, get your name out there, get your, uh, you know, your band talked about more and, you know, in the spotlight, you know, creating videos, I, I guess, is one thing uh, for sure. Doing any kind of promotions, you know, doing any kind of like, uh, you know, video, video diaries and stuff like that, you know, getting your YouTube channel going. It's so much more competitive nowadays than it was when I first started. <clears throat> you know, when I was first coming up, there was maybe 100 bands that were like in the, you know, in the spotlight people talked about. Now there's like thousands of bands. It's so much harder for a band to stick out in this day and age. So I think it's the ones that stick to it. You know, the cream always rises to the top. It's just a matter of getting your, you know, you can have a great record, but if nobody knows about it, 
you know, you got to get it out there and get it known. Absolutely. Either of you uh, have anything to add to that one? Um, what he said pretty much sums it all up. You know, um, we just look at the hard work that those guys really put into it. You know, um, one misconception about today is, you know, you can get famous overnight just because, you know, you have the Internet and it's just like, you know, the Internet does allow you, you know, to put a lot of things out, you know, and allows you to have a voice, you know, but, you know, at the same time, it still takes work, you know, it still takes labor work, it still takes you know what I'm saying? The work that those guys did, you know, those those pioneer bands, you know, the legwork that those guys put in, you know, they didn't have the internet back then, you know, so it was a different type of hustle, you know, opposed to now, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, some of the younger generation, you know, us young heads, we get kind of lazy because, you know, we can just upload something on the internet and then boom, you know, and then we can have a thousand views or a thousand likes in a second and, you know, so it kind of just changes, you know what I'm saying, the mental but having that old school mentality, I like to call it, where, you know, you're getting up, you know, you're acting like you don't have these electronics around you and you're practicing, you know what I'm saying, every single day, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, doing the old school lead work. And that I feel like that's the type of work that, you know, separates bands from, you know, others. Right on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, and... And like you're saying, uh, you know, both of you and, you know, Brian kind of touched on it is, you know, in today's world, it's so easy to, you know, come across, you know, a thousand, ten thousand different bands, you know, that are all sharing the same spotlight, um, you know, but there's always something that allows different bands, uh, different artists to kind of shine separately. And, you know, one thing that we've been talking about this whole time is just, that diversity in your guys' sound is one of the biggest things I think that you know really sets you guys apart. And Thank you me. know, where do you guys? You're welcome. Where do you guys feel that that um, is fueled from? Where does that come from? That a, a, ability to you know, because some bands will get that narrow mindedness where they're like, all right, we can't do this. That that's not that's not who we are. That's not you know our range. Uh, what allows you guys to? Just be very open and be in, be very diverse in your sound. I think, go ahead. A lot of it comes from Eric. I think uh, I think a lot of it was uh, ha uh, listening to a diverse set of music. You know, not just being into metal is great. You know, but metal is not the only form of music, and I think it's important to digest different styles, different sounds, and really uh, soak it in and and uh, and feel it, hear it, breathe it, live. You know, something about diversifying what you listen to, I think, is uh, is fundamental to that. You, know, you need to be listening to different kinds of And that's when you create your own sound. You know, when, when you take all your different influences and you melt them together, that's how you get something unique. And I think we found something out of darkness with that, if that makes any sense. I think it's the different singing as well. You know, there's a lot of clean singing and, say, metal type singing. And then there's a... You know, there's a good bit of rough singing as well. So the music's pretty dynamic. You know, there's some soft parts. There's plenty of heavy parts. Uh, you know, there's a bit of piano in there as well and some keyboard and stuff like that. You know, as well as some, uh, you know, like some atmospheric sound effects and whatnot. Um, I think that the uh, a lot of the lyrical content, it's very modern. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, very easy for people to identify with. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, fantasy kind of lyrics and whatnot. It's very real kind of stuff that, uh, you know, people can identify with. So I think that's a good part of the appeal. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel that, you know, especially in today's generation, you know, allowing your emotions to come out more, you know, a little bit more is more acceptable. And especially, we'll say, like, you know, amongst amongst males. and uh, But being able to have that, that approach of, you know, like Eric was saying, you know, 
you know, not just being, you know, metal music is all about, you know, this and that. It's being able to, you know, take your experiences, you know, all of your experiences. You know, I always feel that, you know, as a person, you know, all the different experiences you've had in your life have brought you to who you are today. Right. That's who you are is all of your experiences in your life. Absolutely. So whether they're good, they're bad, it's who you are. So, you know, you bring that to the table anywhere you go. That's what really makes it. Yeah, that's that's where the uniqueness comes from. Otherwise, everything will be carbon copy. You know, you don't want to sound like somebody else. You know what I'm saying? That's your experiences. And plus, you're never going to be as good at somebody else, at, you know, expressing their feelings, their, you know, emotions, what's going on in their head. You know what I'm saying? I got to be better than doing that than, you know what I'm saying, that the person, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's like finding the uniqueness, you know, channeling everything, the hurt, you know, the happiness, you know, just the ups and the downs and bringing that into, you know, your craft, the things that you love to do, you know, so. Now, for 2021, you know, we, we talked about all the different things that you guys have planned ahead. Is there any one thing, whether it's personally or, you know, for the band that you're you're looking forward to 2021, especially with, you know, you might not be able to do it last year or um, just for any reason? Um, I mean, just playing every, everywhere that we can. We were kind of limited as to where we could play for a while. Uh, that's why we've only done. That's why we've only done Florida so far. But I would say branching out, you know, playing coast to coast and eventually overseas and stuff like that. That's probably the biggest thing that I've got. I mean, I don't know what else you guys got. I was gonna say the same thing. I mean, I'm dying to just hop on that bus and hit the road. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fact. 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 We have a lot of energy. That we definitely want to project out, you know, everybody individually, you know, so it's a, coming together, you know, it's going to be, it's definitely going to be like an explosion. You know, it's definitely going to be an explosion. We need to release that energy <laughs> Most <onto definitely. clears throat> the people, you know, that listen to this music, you know, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. You know, as somebody that loves to get in the pit themselves, like, you know, it's just all this energy, all this you know, we'll say the hatred, the the happiness, the the depression, just you know, you're able to just release it at these shows and just being, you know, we've gone to I think one show since September or not September of November of nineteen. We've had the chance to go to one show and it's just you have all of this that you're able to normally vent out and release. But you no longer have that, you know, that Total. that automobile, so to speak, or that, uh, can't think of the word. Vehicle. Vehicle. Yeah, that vehicle, vehicle to be able. Uh, exactly. Heavy metal. And, and I'm sure for you guys, it's the same thing. Most definitely, man. I'll be in my room, man. Like, <laughs> I'm in my room on 15, bro. Head banging, like, you know, jumping across the walls, upside down and all that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's just like like how you said, you know, what heavy metal is. You know, it's like a therapy. You know what I'm saying? So having the ability to get back on stage, you know, it's kind of just like <laughs> you almost don't. You want to go to sleep because you want, you know, you want to hurry up and get on stage, you know. But at the same time, it's just like you can't sleep because you're so excited, you know, you're so hyped, you know, got so much energy, you know. Something about the form of heavy metal, you know, when you get that hard music, you know, all up in your ears, you know, it just does something to your brain that just releases that the the anger, the, the hate, the sadness. It kind of kind of diffuses it in a way you know something about heavy music and i think that's what draws a lot of listeners to it and that's certainly one of the factors that draws me to heavy metal and i'm sure i'm not alone in that 100 100 percent right on. now with performing at shows and festivals do you guys have any pre-show routines or superstitions that you guys always make sure to do uh, okay. Personally, I uh, I like to stretch. I like to get my legs warm. So 
I'll be doing lunges. I've seen him hopping and stretching. <laughs> yeah, you literally like, hopping and stretching. Like, literally <laughs> jumping in the air. Like I'm talking like, you know, just he's as got he's got air, man. This guy can jump. <laughs> Oh my god! Really? Like I'm about to go play ball or something, man. But it's literally so. You know what I'm saying? There's just no excuse on stage. You know, want to pull nothing. You know, you want to be. He also your... plays ball. Did anyone mention this? He plays ball really good. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So that routine was that's that's one that comes up for sure. Just stretching. You know, getting my legs warm, whole body warm. <laughs> Yeah, I like to warm up. I got a little practice pad kit, double base pedal. I put on some ankle weights. And get back there and get the blood flowing, you know, get the muscles moving. And <clears throat> we all just kind of hang out and try and get psyched up, you know. That's pretty much it. Me, personally, I don't yeah. really do much. I just sit around and wait, I guess. <laughs> I'm, usually, <laughs> I'm usually in the back in some, you know, poorly air-conditioned room sweating saying man i'm retarded we gotta go <laughs> uh, i i could say this brent didn't mention this but he he has this thing he does before his shows i i don't know if he does it on purpose or not but it's definitely a ritual for this guy he he disappears he just like <laughs> whoo, he's gone he's gone until like it's time to warm up and then he'll just suddenly reappear out of nowhere in a completely different set of clothes you know <laughs> Like, yeah, I just, you know, I'm ready to rock, you know, and he just gets back there and starts warming up, and, you know, then we do our show, you know. Yeah, well, you know, I like to uh, be a little bit uh, reclusive, I guess you might say. I just sort of conserve my energy, you know, and I don't want to be all out and about in everything. Uh, you know, you kind of save it, and you, you want to make it special, you know, you, you get in the right frame of mind and, uh, you know, get ready to do the deal. Most definitely. Absolutely. Now, is there anybody in the band that, you know, when you guys go on this tour, that you're always going to have, like, eyes in the back of your head on that's going to be always, you know, pulling pranks on somebody, someone that's always the funny guy? <laughs> hey, in, in in this band, man, it could be anybody on any given day, man. Like, you never yeah. know. Like... <laughs> Like you never know, man. You, it's, it can come at up from from any direction, man. And that's the whole, that's the funness about it, though. You know what I'm saying? You just never know. You know, everybody is like always joking around, and everybody's always messing around. You know, it's full of surprises. Fact. Yep. Yep. You got to keep your eyes on everybody, I guess. <laughs> you can walk around a corner yeah, and get like a pot to the big... face, man. Rather unpredictable bandmates, I gotta say. <laughs> Has there been any jaw-dropping moments from anybody that somebody just surprised you or just did somebody did something that just pops your head? Uh, I can't think of anything. You guys? Um, I've seen everybody individually. <laughs> like take off on stage i've seen them like <laughs> go unconscious man you know so it's like looking back to all our shows you know what i'm saying and just looking at <clears throat> you know whether it be a certain song you know or you know a certain part of the set you know just seeing you know like your brother you know what i'm saying just really doing his thing you know what i'm saying just really taking off being within the moment you know and just like just riding with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can just think of moments like that, you know, just kind of looking over, you know, or seeing Brent levitate 10 feet in the air when he's doing his drum solos and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, just moments like that, you know? Excellent. I've actually no. been surprised by, uh... oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I have been surprised oh, no, ahead, by uh, Bronzel and Cody and Sean and Brent, too, actually. Actually, the whole band, everybody has surprised me with their vocals. They all pretend <laughs> like they can't sing. I swear. I swear. All of them pretend like they can't sing. Every last one of them. I remember one day we were jamming, and I got on Brent's kit, and he got on the microphone, and he just started wailing. And I was like, dude, those are really high notes, man. <laughs> and, uh, 
uh, and Bronzel, he's got a really soulful voice. You know, I think we're going to hear a lot more of everyone's voices uh, with the next record, by the way. Uh, and Cody, he's got a really uh, precise and high temper to his voice. And Sean, he's got a very rock and roll vocal, you know. So it's it was all surprising hearing all of them sing at different points in our journey so far. Uh, they've all surprised me in that that aspect. So we might see like a clean cover or something like that. See everybody just yeah, kind of never know. <laughs> We've been both together. sound a lot like a metal queen. Hey, <laughs> it was appropriate. I don't know. We'll have to hey, see. Right. An idea. <laughs> So, you know, you know, we touched on it earlier, but, you know, you guys just put out a new album here, like, you know, about two weeks ago now, uh, Seize the Day. Um, you can find it over on outofdarkness.live, and also you guys have it up on your Spotify. Uh, Bronzel, what's your favorite song off the album? <clears throat> um... <clears throat> Seize the day, for sure. I like the energy. I like the heaviness. I like the dynamics. Um, for sure, for sure. Seize the day. How about you, Brent? Uh, probably freedom to be free. You know, it's it's a ballad. Uh, I I wrote a lot of the music for it, and Eric wrote some really killer lyrics. It fit it like a glove. It's dedicated to my girlfriend. It's kind of a very personal song. Right on. I know I've listened to that one a few so, a few different times, and that's that's honestly probably one of my favorite songs off the album. I like the just the whole the whole tone of it is is enjoyable for me. Awesome. Eric, how about you? What's your favorite song? Yeah, I've got I've got two favorites. <laughs> one one favorite is I surrender because I love singing it. You know, I, I it's fun to sing. You know, it's a challenge every time, and uh, it, I feel really accomplished by the end of the track. You know, in terms of did I do it? Okay, I guess I survived. I did it. <laughs> and uh, and also uh, my my original favorite is seize the day because uh, it's such a uh, fast sudden powerful track and it's got a lot of really modern stuff to it but uh it also does a few things uh brings in some influence from the past too and it kind of it's it's another one similar to what we were talking about control how it all rolls it all together sees the day kind of does something similar too in my opinion and those are those are my two favorites i surrender and sees the day excellent now you know tours coming up you guys got a lot of shows coming up you know, album just put out. Working on new music here soon for the full length. Is there anything else that anybody should know about Out of Darkness that we just have not talked about? Uh, I mean, the message is very positive. You know, we come from a place of light and love to where a lot of metal bands come from a place of maybe darkness and hate. Uh, we're a little different in that aspect. You know, it's very positive, very uh, uplifting. Uh, it's about love, bringing people together. Um, I would say that's one thing. Uh, you know, it's it's very diverse as well. You know, if you listen to one tune, you might not get the whole scope of the dynamics of the band. <clears throat> you know, there's like Control and Seize the Day. There's those kind of really heavy songs. Um, there's Freedom to Be Free, which is the ballad. You know, I Surrender. Uh, you know, it's definitely different. Um, and then you have a song like Think Again, which is completely different again. So there's a lot of different, uh, you know, sounds that come from the one band. So I would say that. And, uh, you know, we're I think we're really amazing live. You know, we're still kind of getting our groove on. We've only played about a half a dozen shows so far. Um, but you definitely want to see it live. Uh, other than that, I don't know anything to add, fellas. Well, Out of Darkness is coming for you. <laughs> yeah. We're, <laughs> we're super excited. Super excited. All right. Awesome. 
So again, we had the opportunity here to sit with Out of Darkness. They just put out Seize the Day earlier this month. Make sure to go ahead and grab that over at outofdarkness.live and also stream it over on Spotify on their channel. And make sure you guys be on the lookout for all their shows in the Florida area here in May. I know they've got a couple of different festivals. We talked about like Carolina Rising. You've got Metal in the Mountains and many more shows. So make sure you guys are following them on Facebook, Twitter, and all of the socials. So again, thank you for joining us here with Out of Darkness and Squatch Out. Thanks for having us. Metal lives. <laughs>